Um, if you wanted to uh, develop uh, what's called a funicular shape, right, um, which might look something like this, right, um, we just again need to think about how um, that shape is going to be as assumed under its self weight, right? So catenaries, although we didn't call them funiculars before, they actually are funiculars, right? The the shape that um, they are, they are defining is created only by them being anchored and falling under gravity under their own weight, right? So there's some other types of funiculars as well, and funicular. Um, just comes from the, the word in Latin uh, chord, right? So here we have some, uh, some chords that are weighted, and we get a shape that, um, again, looking at um, Friado's Institute for Lightweight Structures uh, publications, the IL journals, um, you can see how this is related to Gaudi's process of uh, creating uh, some of his uh, designs, such as the Sagrada Familia, where we're weighting some chords and interconnecting them to create a model, such as we see here, to help us define how we're going to create the catenary shapes and the funicular domes um, from those inputs, right? And again, this is the same process that was used for the Sagrada Familia. This is from um, some of Mark Burry's research, this photograph, which I would recommend if you're interested in these things. Okay, so um, let's take a look uh, very quickly at um, the last file, which was 2-1 funiculars. And this isn't going to seem exactly right, but I'll set this mesh as an input. And let's see what we get as a result. Right? So here we have um, a shape that is assumed under anchoring the corners when it's placed under gravity, right? Um, so if I were to um, do another version of this, right? If I create a 3D face over here to the side, and I make three of them and join them as we did before, Let's bring this into our input and see what we get. This is a little bit maybe easier to understand, right? We have simple um, mesh faces on the construction plane. And then we're doing the exact same thing we did before, which is dividing the faces internally, applying springs to all those edges, right, which we can change the rest length factor, find the mesh corners to find our anchor points, and then just apply gravity to those, those same uh, vertices for our mesh, right? And if we wanted this to go up instead of down, all we need to do is reverse the direction of our, uh, our factor here, so we can start to create uh, some funicular domes, right? And again, this is all the exact same file. We just applied gravity as we did earlier. Um, to simulate um, our funicular shapes, right? And um, just to give you a kind of a sneak peek as to what else you can do with the previews, if you um, take the, the vertices, which were our geometry out, we can analyze their Z uh, location and use that Z value to drive a coloration on the actual shape. Because meshes, you can attach a color to each vertex to get a corresponding preview uh, from it, right? Um, so once more, I'll just um, I'll take a little peek at this. We can increase the uh, resolution. Uh, we can change the gravity or the rest length factor, make it more than one, and it will fall, fall or uh, ascend farther. And we get um, this corresponding funicular set of domes. All right, so uh, let's, we have time for a couple of questions. And um, if these last couple of exercises were uh, interesting to you, um, we're working on uh, producing some more content uh, for you that will um, get more um, kind of 
rigorously and deeply into simulation um, for uh, funicular shapes and things like that to work with nets and membranes and things like that. So if you're interested in that, um, uh, keep a lookout for upcoming events. And if there are some specific things you want to see, always feel free to send us a line on Facebook or via email, and we'll see if we can't work that content into our schedule. All right, so it doesn't look like there are any questions on the last couple of exercises, so um, let's wrap up the, uh, the webinar. Um, 